Well, hello again, everyone. Uh, my name is Marty Guthmiller. I'm the CEO at Orange City Area Health System. And uh, fortunately for you today, you don't have to look at just me. I have a guest. Uh, Dr. DJ Donlin will uh, join us here in just a moment after I give a couple introductory things, and I'll come back and give DJ a more formal introduction as well. Um, just a little bit of a tip, by the way. The first time that I, I heard of the name DJ Donlin, was I think I was probably maybe five or six. No, I'm kidding. Okay. Um, I think I was in probably middle school at the time, and and I remember this kid named DJ Donlin from Lamar's, or actually played for Lamar's Bulldogs. Yeah. And so I was familiar with with DJ. Um, oh, a few years back. And as we talked with Dr. Laird earlier on, Dr. Laird and I played football together just after the leather helmet era. I think at Northwestern. Well, DJ is actually from the leather helmet era. <laughs> uh, but uh, in all seriousness, DJ was a great athlete um, and played uh, football at Augustana in Sioux Falls and was the quarterback there. And a little known fact, uh, guess who Dr. Dylan's center was for two years or one? Uh, two. Two years. Yeah. Was Dr. James Clemens, otherwise known as the hammer. The hammer. The hammer, yes. So, um, but we'll get, to, we'll get to a little bit more to DJ in just a second. Um, I wanna just emphasize a couple things that I did yesterday um, in this briefing, and that is that uh, I think we're entering a very uh, vulnerable time uh, as we begin to open things up, as we begin to want to shed ourselves of some of these social distancing things, and so, uh, I would just ask you to remain very vigilant. Uh, I mean, still get outside, still have fun, and still do the things Dr. Donlin's gonna talk about. Um, but, but be very careful uh, to let, let your guard down too much during this time. Um, and again, as we transition to the new normal, uh, this, will, this will be a, a very trying time as well. So let's, let's transition to uh, Dr. Dylan at this point. Uh, Dr. Dylan is a registered, uh, he's our, he's our uh, resident, so to speak, not, not so to speak, you are, yeah. our resident psychologist. And uh, it'll be five years already in May. And so it's amazing. Dr. Dylan joined us and, and wife Kay uh, joined us from Thief River Falls, Minnesota, five years ago. So we're gonna talk about ways that People can care for themselves and their loved ones during these challenging times. And we'll talk a little bit also about the way that you can access um, services here at Orange City Area Health System. So I have a couple questions for you today. Um, and the first one is, why are times like these so stressful? Um, you know, I think one of the reasons, Marty, is all of this is new. So this is a new virus. Because it's new, there's so much that we don't know. The numbers change, the prediction models change. Um, and because of that, because of this unknown, it kind of gives us a sense of uh, loss of control. And for most of us, we like to have control of our lives and think we know what's coming, but this has sort of uh, tipped us upside down. I think if you combine that with a, a tendency for some to kind of disasterize, to kind of at times are taught, uh, think of the worst, plan for the worst, hope for the best. Um, but sometimes we can get carried away with the disaster stuff and, and think of that, it consumes a lot of time, consumes a lot of energy. But I think another factor is a lot of our comforts have been removed from us. Uh, I'm not talking about toilet paper. Uh, I, I'm <laughs> talking too. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I'm talking about um, our routines, the people that we are used to being with, you know, the places that we go, the gym, the restaurants, all of that has changed. And so the things that we used to use to comfort maybe not be there. That Archie steak sure sounds good right now, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> that loss of control is, is, is a big, big deal. So I appreciate that. What are some signs or symptoms of stress that we could be looking for? Well, it, I want to do a cautionary note there because a lot of times we, we think, well, this is a sign of stress or that is a sign of stress. And the reality is everybody's different. 
And so what it looks like in one person will look different than another person. So okay. we don't, it, it, it's important to not just go by a list. Um, there's different things that, that we can look for, but to not just go down a list. And if we have one, it means we're, we're so stressed. These are abnormal times. And so a lot of the ways we're reacting, I think we can say it's a normal response to an abnormal time. When we start talking about significant stress reactions, perhaps we're talking about abnormal response in an abnormal time. So kind of going above and beyond. And what could that look like? Again, it can be many different things, but generally you think, does it affect the way a person can think? Does it affect their energy? Does it get in the way of what they need to be doing? And when that begins to happen significantly, then probably it's time to say, let's do some stress management. And, and stress management, I would guess, is in the eyes of the beholder also, uh, right? Same thing. Yeah. Uh, so the other day when I went out to my farm and I was practicing stress management and I started a fire and it kind of got out of hand a little bit, that probably wasn't the right approach uh, to take. Well, it was stress that you created, and uh, yeah. if you got it under control. But I was in control. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Okay. Uh, what are some practical ways to de-stress? Um, again, a, a couple of don'ts and a couple of do's. Um, one of the don'ts is don't think that you have to do it in a certain way. In some ways, it's like grieving. You know, they write books about grieving. They write books about stress. And that may apply for some, but it doesn't necessarily apply to all. So kind of pick what your stress management strategy could be based on if you think it's working. And we can talk about it if we know if it's working. And another thing, it's sort of a survival tactic in the midst of difficulty. Um, and that is don't focus on what you can't control. There's so much right now that we can't. Uh, we can't control who's going to get sick or how sick or how long this is going to last or when it's going to end. All of that mostly is out of our control. So instead, Focus on what we can control, the things that we have in our immediate ability uh, to make different. And there's lots and lots of those kinds of things. We can control what we eat and when we eat and when and our sleep. Some people think, well, but I can't sleep well. There are things that you can try to do to manage that. You can keep it controlled. So you're trying to identify those things and become active in the process. Um, I think of common resiliency factors. Now there's a whole body of research on being resilient to difficulty or to stress. And, and there's some common factors that give us some protection. Um, some of those protections can be things like just being an independent thinker. You don't have to do it like everybody else does. A major one is staying connected. Being able to connect to somebody that you trust, that you can get information from, that can give you uh, another one, interestingly, I found is to not take everything so seriously. Uh, the ability to look at our own imperfections and being able to even laugh at them can be very, very helpful um, and healthy. Um, another one is altruism, being able to help others in the midst of difficulty so that we're not so focused on our own. Again, all of those are things. One I'd like to emphasize, though, is the importance of self-care. So sometimes when we think of self-care, we think, oh, well, then how can you do self-care but also be, be altruistic? How can you help others? Well, I think of the, um, when you go in on an airplane ride, and at the beginning, they're doing the safety instructions, and they say, in case of emergency and the oxygen mask deploy, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to grab the oxygen mask and put it on yourself first. Right. And, and that's not being selfish. It's saying, let me take care of myself so that I can take care of others. And that's a really important message because sometimes we're so busy trying to take care of others that we then aren't able to physically and emotionally care for the people. Um, and, and, you know, another one is, is to be a good consumer. Um, there's so much stuff out there. And as we are aware of things, it's going to be important to consume information, to consume things rather than be consumed by it. It's easy to be overwhelmed by things, information, food, other things that are unhealthy. So you want to have that balance in order to consume it and allow you to move forward. We did talk about that a little bit earlier in terms of pick one or two uh, reliable news sources and, and stay with that. Don't, don't succumb yourself to 24 hours of, of that. Um, and so the challenge was finding a reliable news source, though. You know? yeah. 
others, but you can pick one or two and and uh, and stay with that, but but limit that. And make sure it's energizing you and empowering you rather than taking away. Frightening, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Um, what are some ways that people can assess services here at at uh, Orange City Area Health System? Do we do we need a referral to see you? No, it, it, you know I, the reason that I think that's important to bring up is I still have people calling in saying does somebody need to refer you here? And the answer is no. People can just call the general clinic number, the 737-2000 number, mm -hmm. and just ask for behavioral health and they can get uh, an appointment anytime they want. Perfect, thanks. Anything else you wanna add for today, DJ? This has been helpful. No, I, you know, I'll follow up on the, on the Jim Clemens Hamler story. So <laughs> whenever Jim sees new people, he says we had a close relationship in college, <laughs> and we did, even <laughs> though we didn't spend a lot of time together. <laughs> okay, well, moving right along. Um, we'd like to thank you again for joining us um, for, the, for this session today of our community briefing. Just a reminder, if you do come in to see Dr. Donlin or any, anyone out of our other doctors here at the clinic uh, in today's world, please bring a mask with you. If you don't have one, we'll provide you uh, with one uh, when you arrive, but it would help us out in, in our supply if you uh, bring your own. So that's just a reminder. And finally, uh, just a reminder also, stay vigilant, stay strong, and stay healthy. Thank you again for joining us today.